aspect of especially conscious people because your consciousness is also based on yourself and everything else. That there's a metamorphosis being that's, that's taking place. Um, that's, that's, that's taking place. Um, and because of that uh, metamorphosis taking place and stuff, uh, this lineup indicates that. So you have already changed. You have already changed. You've already having a certain lineup. You're having a certain lineup um, at this particular time because of what's getting ready to happen in a. Uh, yeah. Hopefully in a few weeks, a few weeks on in to the new year and all, which we're going to get on into. So, uh, um, but let's see, a couple other things here. Let's just pull libations first. Let's give them theirs. And then uh, we'll get some of these, these uh, new entities. Get some of these new entities and all. Should I bring my what you call it? Y'all all right? Okay. Always a bag of books. This is an excellent book, a new book that just, this is a book that came out, I think about two years ago. An excellent book. Um, the Tutankhamen, this, uh, Tutankhamen Prophecies by Maurice Car uh, Carterell. I think he also wrote uh, the book, The uh, Mayan Prophecies, C-O-T-T-E-R-E-L-L. -E -L -L. This is an excellent book because they deal with melanin in here and also the pineal gland, which is very key, uh, uh, which is very key. Um, uh, don't get comfortable, black man. I was getting ready to use that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. Yeah. Uh. But we got. Like I said, we have. Uh, it's going to be impossible to do all 92, but we're going to. Uh. We're going to do something. Also, uh, I'm urging the people, I'm urging the people, you got till January the 18th to make it to Baltimore, to uh, make it to Baltimore to check out the, the, uh, the Book of the Dead and the last aspect of um, the Eternal Egypt collection that's coming from the British Museum of, the, uh, of, of all, the, all the Camite stuff. Which is clearly black figures when you go in a particular museum. And you have till January the 18th to make it up there, and I'm, I'm urging you to make it because I saw it in Kansas, a couple of people saw it in Chicago, because it went to the, uh, a couple of people saw it in Chicago. Um, so I'm urging you to go see this one in Baltimore because it's a little different. Baltimore has a permanent collection with almost 100 other pieces including a statue of the Great Mother Abbot Tyre. You know, a, a, including the statue of the Great Mother Abbot Tyre. And two big colossal statues of the goddess Sekhmet. So I'm urging you to uh, uh, at least get up to Baltimore before the 18th. I know it's kind of, that's the rough time, it's a bad time of year to try to go doing Christmas or uh, New Year's and people have less my, uh, least amount of money. But, uh, you should uh, make it up. That's the last. Uh, that's the last date. I think it's going to Canada after that. I think it's going to Canada after that. So um, make it to make it up to uh, make it up to uh, Baltimore at the Walter Art Museum and see that particular uh, that particular exhibit. Now, one other thing happened when I. When the sister that had me to come speak, she said, well, it's not by mistake that you're going, you're coming back, you're coming to speak in this city at the same time that you have the exhibit going on. And I said, yeah, I said, spiritual. I said, when I saw it in Kansas, I did a lecture there. I said, it was there too. I said, but she said, no, there's going to be something that's special about this one. So I said, yes, I believe it is. Now, on the... The, what's that, the 15th of May, which is May 15th, which was the time the second movie, Matrix uh, Reloaded, was, uh, was released on May 15th. When that particular movie came out, we also had seven entities called the Seven half or the Seven Ishtars, or the so, so, Seven Holy Reaches of the Pleiades. And um, they came, Ishtar, Monu, Noku, Mana, Titi, Enma, Tu and Jova. And so it's seven of these particular ones, 
But they all represent the seven. Ishtar, a Hathor, which is the goddess, is Venus in Rome, Aphrodite in Egypt, uh, Ishtar in Babylonia, Hathor in Kemet, Urzuli in West Africa. Uh, also, Yemenya would be a form of that in West Africa. Um, but it's also the goddess of love, or the goddess uh, 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 the goddess Venus. So it's interesting here because it was there and something pulled me to go into the, uh, when, we, when we first were buying the tickets to go in, something pulled me to go get a brochure, a regular brochure of the actual exhibit that, the regular exhibit that is in the museum. And I saw this picture of this statue, African Venus. So after the tour, we went, I went in the actual bookstore, something pulled me in there. And in so many words, this particular person actually summons me to bring this thing out of that museum. And I have the picture right here that uh, um, we put one on, on, on one of the films in Baltimore and it didn't come out. But uh, this is the picture of the African Venus. Uh, some people are having several experiences with this thing, um, with this African Venus. This is a picture of the African Venus. Now, one thing I had to send this also to Chicago, because there was a sister up there that does sister locks and dreadlocks. And this is very special because 10 years ago we had this debate that was going on over at Morehouse College in the, in the AU Center, and a debate that was also going on in the Afrocentric world, where they were trying to say were dreadlocks fundamentally African, or were they something that came out of the Caribbean? And so they had also said that we knew that the Egyptian kids wore dreadlocks. They said something about the Egyptian boys wearing dreadlocks. But, but at, um, at a certain age, they cut them off. But here is a woman, a dreadlock figure, called the African Venus. This came from the, uh, from, from the museum, called the African Venus. And if you can clearly see that this particular woman here, there is no doubt that uh, these are dreadlocks that these are dreadlocks. You can clearly see this. Um, now he went there years, he went there four years earlier, five years early, and he went to do this particular brother, which is, which is the, the, the king of Sudan. We had to work with this one to get it cut down a little bit. We're um, we going to make some of these available, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, uh, for a fee, and all, you know, that you'll be able to get them. Now here's, here's a brother, and he went, they went there four years ago to, to, to film, to, to do this brother. This guy here, the, 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 the guy who was the sculptor is a French sculptor by the name of um, Charles Henry Joseph. And this is called the uh, King of, of, of Dauphia, a Dauphia, Sudan. Um, I, think this has some, I think this has a Dogon connection to it, to me, because the clothes clearly suggest a form of Dogon. Um, they, they went and he did this particular picture, this one in, in, in 18, eight, uh, 1848, 1848. He went back again in 1851. The spirit gave me, the, told me that he was so captivated by this particular woman when he went in 1848 uh, and he went back five years later to do her. And this is the one that a brother is, is tight too. But this is the one that has a lot of magic behind it because, because um, uh, not only did it start communicating with a lot of sisters here in Atlanta who had just, uh, when I first brought it back, but since then, a couple of other sisters, uh, a couple of other sisters um, one or two other sisters that don't even live in Atlanta, it also communicates to them too. Now, the, the story is that, well, whatever this woman was, I asked, was, did, did she reincarnate? And they said no. But, the goddess Hathor, or Ishtar, said that in actuality it was her energy, her energy, and her spirit that actually had this guy and captivated this guy to go back five years later and do this. So you are actually getting energy of the goddess Hathor, the goddess Venus, Ishtar, Aphrodite, the goddess of love of Urzumi, just by viewing these partic this particular picture. So uh, uh, this particular picture, but um, um, this is also one of the permanent pieces at the Walters Art Museum, at the Walters Art Museum, but uh, for those particular people that can't travel these days, um, we will make these available to you.
who, who make these available to you also. Um, luckily, the prints come out almost identical. Uh, come out almost identical. But we are suggesting that you still go, you got to the 18th to see almost an additional floor of Egyptian uh, sculptures. And when you see this stuff, there is, but no one can argue when you go to uh, see these things at the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so that, that's very key. All right, let's pull libations and um, let's get this going. Y'all all right? Yes. And then we'll, we'll we got a lot to cover. And uh, uh, let's see, I'll spit this four ways and then we'll pour him a cup of water, I guess, also. Hmm. All right. I'll check, I'll give him a cup of water when he comes back in the cup. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, so we uh, give them theirs. Um, this is very key now, as you know, always deal with your, um, your libations. Now I know something's going down. Uh, well, I was able to keep my landlord at bay for damn near a year. <laughs> and um, I've been pulling magic ever since Ginger left and went from a damn two family income down to no income almost. <laughs> Same time she hauled ass. Uh, the, 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 the lecture circuit uh, crashed and burned. And so basically, I've been basically running on fucking fumes for damn near all of the 2000s. You know, and also, that's magic within itself, you know what I'm saying? That's magic within itself. And this is interesting because I'm one of the sisters, because I've been talking about how the best, your best ritual is one you make up yourself. So in so many words, when you go to the store, and you get these books, the reason why those books are in Barnes and Noble's Borders and you can go and see all that magic, because none of that magic works now. That means, and I've been talking about this for the last two or three years, you buy those books to get the basic concept and the basic schematic principles of what the magic and ritual is, but when it comes to the actual ritual, now you can't go and you can reactivate those rituals by creating the rituals in certain aspects of yourself. Now, what is the best thing to do? Whenever something pops in your head that's real crazy, that you don't believe it, that's probably the best shit to put down for the ritual. You see what I'm saying? Because number one, it's gone against the grain of logic. So the best thing to do is when something, because it, it, it's going to off-center the left brain. You see? So whenever it sounds ridiculous, that's the time to do it. You, know, you have to have confidence in yourself also. So what is happening here is the reason why a lot of magical systems are not working for you is because the simple fact you are, the simple fact is you, you are not giving enough essence of yourself, which is the only and the last aspect left on the planet is your being. That is why the essence now the metamorphosis and the essence now is the your own energy. So if you go in a bookstore, you get these particular books, you got any magic stuff, right now at this particular time, whatever you think of in your mind, no matter how ridiculous you think it is, that's the one to put down. It's called confidence. It's just like one sister, she had a, you know, one young sister got a boyfriend, he acting all stupid. So what she did is took his name, and I tried this shit too, and it worked like a worked great for about a month. <laughs> she took his name and wrote on a piece of paper, you know, permanent marker, wrote on a piece of paper, put it in some ice water, put it in a cup. You know, you gotta put it in a cup, and then she put it in the freezer, you put it in the glass, it's gonna, it's gonna bust. So she took it and put it in the freezer, and I said, well, what happened? They said, his ass chill out. This <laughs> motherfucker chill out. And I said, this is some genius stuff, and it worked. So the brother who was telling me this from New York said, you need to do your landlord like that. I said, yeah, any reinforcement. So I did it, and for a month he chilled out. You see what I'm saying? Then, uh, he, and so they told me a Monday. They told me on the Tuesday. They said you need this a new month. Go put his name. So I took his business card, and put it up in there. Put his name back in the water again. So I waited two days on Wednesday. The motherfucker knocked on the damn door because I didn't do it. You see, right off. So I went and did it after. He, you know, I, I, I was real quiet in the house, you know. They like I went home. <laughs> And it was interesting because the spirit knew it was coming, so they, so you, I be blasting the music or whatever. They put me to sleep. You see what I'm saying? So I went over in my sleep bed. So when I, so when he knocked on the door, it was real quiet. I just peeped out the window and shit, you know. 
and he and all. So then, I didn't come to the door, and the spirit told, told, told somebody, you need to put you, because you can look in my house and see in my house and stuff, and the doorways, you need to put you something over your fucking doorway and stuff, you know. And also, you won't see your ass running around up in there or whatever. So anyway, he left. And I said, okay, they said, okay, it's all good now, we, we protect you. So he came back that Saturday. He came back last Saturday, after about two, two more days, and I said, wait a minute, hold on. There's something going on here. So I went out and faced him and shit like that and all, and he, I know what's going on because all the rent is going up in the area. And see what I'm saying? The rent is going up in the area. So every, it mostly ties to $1,300, $1,200 just for rent now. You see what I'm saying? Everybody knows the complaint about Atlanta how everything is shot up sky high, but the cost of living. You know, but the, pace, the, pay, the cost of living is shot up, but the pay scale happens. So this is the only city where the cost of living is off the hook, but the pay scale is 10 years ago. And everybody's talking about this shit here, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so, so, the, 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 uh, so he said that the, uh, uh, I know he's mentioning this, and uh, he gave me all these conditions and stuff like that. I don't know, I was, I was a month behind. He told me I was two months behind. But who's the argue? I'm not a man, I don't know shit. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so, he told me I got to have uh, $2,000 by January. Now, that's like asking me to have seven million. <laughs> Little serious business. I'm putting it on the goddamn floor. I got enough people here. Uh, uh, if, 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 if the ship don't come, which we that's what we gonna go into. Uh, by January, y'all get in touch with all Kasatis and shit, cause I might need to lay on one of y'all motherfuckers floor. <laughs> I'm not telling no joke, cause I ain't got no two thousand damn dollars. And you know the funny thing about it is I know this guy because I know because I know what's going on because the rent is going up. You know, I say twelve. I'm paying six fifty, and everybody's paying double that. So I know what's going on and stuff like that. No. So, uh, but the point about it, I said you would wait. You wouldn't ask me in September. I said I could have took three, four months to get up two thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Uh, August. You asked me in December. Well, you know, ain't nobody got no damn money. Fucked up thing about it, my brother, my oldest brother who was driving the Jaguar and his wife was driving the uh, uh, Navigator shit, the hell the motherfucker stand with my brother. <laughs> the motherfucker had money. <laughs> they stand with my dog one brother and shit like that. So I'm like, hell, I can't even retreat over there and shit because they got a hospital of people and stuff. But I know that it is, it is close because there's some shit that's also going down because it's, weird, it's this way all over. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people, people that normally have it, you see what I'm saying now? I call up and like, yo, man, oh, shit, I ain't got it. I don't have nothing. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, y'all check the Arkansas and shit, because uh, 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 I might be homeless by, by January and stuff. So, uh, I'm just putting that out there and shit. Y'all get a room ready or somebody or whatever the deal is and shit, because that might happen. But now, I'm going to tell you what's really happening now. I say that in joking and whooping, you know, no, that's actually serious. <laughs> but the spirit part that's happening is, what has happened to the spirits that they stopped blocking, even when I told them the Wednesday before this crap, not a crap, he's a, he's a black man, before he came back, why would you all not block for me and have shit? I mean, hell, I kept the man at bay a whole year, hell, February, January, and February, I didn't pay a motherfucker at all. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, um, well, what's going on? So it's got something to do, and which the answer to why I realize this motherfucker gonna put my ass out has a lot to do with the crux of the lecture, and has a lot to do with what I started off with 12 years ago with the Dogon, the mothership, and all of that. That's the key to this thing, you know. So we gotta go back into this particular lure, and we gotta go into all the new research that has come out based on this UFO phenomenon, or extraterrestrial phenomenon, show the pros and the cons, the falsehoods, and the realities of what's going on. Because believe me, I believe that I think we hit gold. We're going to go into this type of thing, and um, let's just put it this way. Um, if the shit shows up at your house, be ready to go. Now you don't have to worry about it because you're not going to have to abandon the earth. You see what I'm saying? It's not about that. It's about having different aspects to different uh, geographical locations in split seconds. 
And so, and also having access to your home and having access to your other home that's owned this particular city in the sky. All this stuff is talking about Muhammad and Muhammad and different other people talk about that and all. Uh, for, the, for these particular people, we're going to get into the, 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 the real scholarly aspect of this stuff. And the research that has come out since the last 12 years, but we're also talking about you having an extra added dimension in your life in this particular aspect. All that you have been learning for the last 12 years has got to account for something. It's not just for you to, you know what I'm saying, because it's actually kind of depressing to know that you are the kings and queens of the earth and ain't got no power. And seeing black people just the worst motherfuckers on the planet now, it's niggas. So it's actually depressing and stuff. But it's, so it's got to be more to it then you just learn a little bit about your history to go along with your life that ain't really working too hot. Because we are all just hanging on. You see what I'm saying? If you think you ain't hanging on, just wait a motherfucking month and go out to that mailbox and your ass will see. You know what I'm saying? I went out there a damn day. I, I went out there a day and all, you know, I avoid the mail until they send a little card, you know. So, you know, they send, so I avoid the, the, the letters to, the, to, the, to, to my electricity until they send the card. That's I me, mean, that's a cutoff notice. <laughs>
They went over to Iraq. They got caught in the windstorms. They caught some stuff called cancer. I go to New York City. I get this author, Kenneth Grant's final book. Cost me $100 to get the book. Because I bought the first edition that came off the boat from England. The book is $65, but it was in New York. They wanted 100 for it. You got it. So, and in the book, it's explaining about this cancer. So now, we know that this stuff is a spirit. We know that it's a wind. We know that it, it, it goes through wind. We also know that the god Pazuzu, very key, which will be 30 years since the movie The Exorcist came out, that the god Pazuzu is a god, as they said in Jeffrey Burton Russell's book, a demon or a monster of the southwest wind and a god that, treads, that, that, that carries disease. Now stick with me. Because Pazuzu and a god named Seker, Osiris Seker is a god of the desert. Now the Dogon does a city ceremony every 60 years. Recap it. And that's called the Hinti period. And the Hinti period, no, it's called the city, city ceremony. In Egypt, it's every 120 years, which is the birthday of Osiris. And that's called the Hinti period. And as Robert Temple in his book, The Rising of the Serpent 2 chapter, last part of the chapter in Robert Temple's The Serious Mystery Book, tells you that when you have a city ceremony, which is two 60-year period, uh, 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 one 120-year period, you have what is called a Hinti period, and it unleashes a god in the death boat called Seker, which is a form of Horus, a form of Jesus. Or Osiris, it was called Osiris Seker, but before it was called Osiris, it was also called Seker, the god of the desert, or Sars, the god of the desert. So we're talking about a disease, we're talking about an entity, we're talking about winds, and all of this. So now we go and you get this fire on the East Coast, you get a blackout, that some entities came through this summer based on this big blackout, but you get the fires on the West Coast, and all of a sudden, this mysterious entities come through the smoke of the fire, of the Osiris's, of the Saws. Because this is all based on melanin. This dark matter. It's all in the movie Dean Coons Phantoms. This cargo, the, the, the hydro cargo. We've been talking about this for two, three years. You get what's coming on, what's coming down here? Now, this is the other thing. The blackout that happened. The October of 2002, I went to Cleveland. I was telling them about the mysterious black waters off the coast of Florida that, that appear 700 miles wide. They said it was interesting because we have the same black waters in the Cleveland River. In the, in the, in the uh, Lake, was it Lake, Erie, Lake Erie, I think. Which one is Cleveland? Erie. Lake Erie. So they got these black waters in Lake, Lake Erie. So the scene shift, the blackout comes in the, in the summer of 2003. I go to Cleveland, Ohio, and they say it's interesting here that the day that they went in to investigate the black waters, they had a whole scientist team. One guy gets killed was the same day that they had the black.